In this video, I'm going to take you through the rest of my network side grade, customizing Pi-hole. Make sure you stick around and hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to have a look at the rest of the customization of Pi-hole. So we're going to be looking at the blacklist, the whitelist, setting static DHCP reservations, local DNS, and of course, integrating into Home Assistant. If you haven't already, check out part one of this network side grade video, where I go through the setup process of Pi-hole with my Sky router. So let's get going. So, of course, Pi-hole is primarily an ad blocker. And when we set Pi-hole up, we agreed to use all of the kind of default block lists that were available. But you might want to add some more. For this example, I'm going to be using firebog.net to give me a few more lists. Generally on this website, if it's got a green tick, then it's good to go and you're very unlikely to receive false positives. But with that said, I would still recommend only adding a few at a time so, and keep an eye on your browsing experience to make sure that you're not blocking anything you don't want to block. So I'm going to copy all of the green ticked ones from the tracking and telemetry section. You can just copy them all in one go and then head over to Pi-hole under the group management and the add list section. You can paste them all in one go into this section here and the space will separate them out. I'd recommend adding a comment to where you got these lists from, so you can refer back to them later if you need to. Once happy, we need to press save, and then we need to update the block server. So we can either do that by running the command pi-hole minus g when we're SSH'd into it, or much more easily, we just press this online button, and it'll take us to another page where we just need to press the update. Once that's done, we can head back to the pi-hole dashboard and we can see that our block list number has gone from 80,000 odd to over 100,000. So these new lists are clearly affected or being recognized. Now you might find that some things get blocked that they shouldn't because they're on the wrong list or, or whatever. And so what you need to do is add them to a whitelist. Thankfully, there's a very easy way to add the commonly blocked items that shouldn't be blocked to a whitelist in that the whitelist already exists. We just need to install it onto Pi-hole. Thank you to Anu Deep ND for their GitHub repository uh, on this. So we're going to head over to that, linked below, obviously. And we can follow this simple two-line install process. We obviously need to be SSH'd into the Pi, and then we just need to clone the repo and then run the, the Python script to install it. Once that's done, we can head into our Pi hole, into the whitelist section, and we can see a nice long list of all of the whitelisted sites. So that's the ad blocking done. Now we can move on to the DHCP server. Personally, I like to assign static IP addresses to everything known on my network. And obviously to keep all that information in one place, I use a spreadsheet. But how do we get the spreadsheet of static IP addresses into the DHCP reservations on Pi-hole? Well, the first thing we need to do is work out how Pi-hole stores or reads DHCP reservations. The easiest way to do that is just to add one manually. So we head into the DHCP server and we add one for this Mac here. We then head over to terminal. Once we're SSH'd into the Pi, we do cd slash etc slash dnsmask.d. Then we hit ls and we can see that there is a file here called 04 static DHCP reservations, or what's that effect? And what we do is we use the less command to read that, and we can see what format Pi-hole wants our reservations to be in. You can see that it's DHCP-host equals MAC address, comma, IP address, comma, name. That name obviously can't have any spaces in it. So it's simple, we just need to turn our spreadsheet into a file in this format. So in my spreadsheet, I've got a number of columns, including a friendly name, a name with no spaces, an IP address, a MAC address, a location, all of that kind of useful thing. And then I've got a separate sheet or a second sheet which gets the key information from the first one. So it's just getting the name with no spaces, the static IP address and the MAC address in the other order. So it's got the 
MAC address, the IP address, and then the name. And we just need to download that as a CSV. Now I've made a very simple Python script which reads this CSV and outputs it in the right format. I'm no dev, so I'm sure there's a better and easier way of doing this. But if you want my script, I've left a link to it below. It basically reads the file, puts it in the right format, gets rid of any lines that don't have all the information required so you don't have any problems, and then resaves the file with the right file name that we're going to need. We can then copy it over to our Pi-hole device. So we're going to use the command scp. We use scp, the file name, and then we send it, in theory, to the Pi-hole in the right place. Unfortunately, the dnsmask.d folder is pseudo protected, so you can't just send it there, you keep getting permission denied errors. So you've got to copy it over to the Pi Hole, and then once you're on Pi Hole, once you're SSH'd in there, you can use a sudo move command to move it into the right place. I then rebooted the Pi, and you can see that all the static DHCP reservations appear in the list on the dashboard. Well, not the dashboard, in, in the settings. And now that's done, we can move on to the local DNS. So as we know, a DNS server basically converts what you type into your address bar into an IP address so the browser can find the information you're searching for. So the current workflow or signal path flow of the data or of your message or your command is you type an address into the address bar, it will then check your whitelist. If it's on the whitelist, then it will go straight through. If it's not on the whitelist, it will check it on the blacklist. If it's on the blacklist, then obviously it would just be blocked. But if it's not on the blacklist, then it will then go to the DNS server or the external DNS server. For me, I've set this up to be the Google DNS servers, but you may have changed that in your settings earlier. And the Google DNS server will just point your browser into the right place or to the right web server to find the information you're looking for. But we can introduce local DNS into that workflow, and that will go before the whitelist, because it's before it needs to go outside of the network. What it's basically doing is taking a device where you'd usually type in an IP address into your web bar, and mean, resulting in you being able to type in a domain name into your web bar instead, and it will point it to the right IP address. Sometimes this is built in for devices or applications, for example, Home Assistant. You can either type in the IP address of your Home Assistant instance, or you can just do homeassistant.local, and it will take you there. The same with Pi-hole. You either type in the IP address of your Pi-hole device, or you just do pi.hole, and it will take you there. But not all devices have this. And I'm going to give you a demonstration here with a camera. This is an E1 Zoom, uh, and I want to, instead of having to remember the IP address of the camera to get the web interface, I just want to be able to type in a simple domain name and it will take me to the camera. So we're going to head over to our local DNS and we're going to add in the domain that we want. For this, I'm going to use zoom.cam. Okay, it's a camera and it's called a zoom. And then you type in the IP address of this camera. Obviously, it's got to be static, which we reserved in our static reservations earlier. And it's as simple as that. Once we hit save, I can then search zoom.cam and it'll take me straight to the login page of the camera. Now, the network is very nearly set up. The last thing I need to do is change the SSID of the Wi-Fi on the Sky Hub. I had left this as something else for now because I didn't want all my devices trying to connect and getting stuck and failing and falling over whilst I was playing with DHCP servers and everything. So now that's all done and all my static reservations are in, I can change the SSID of my Wi-Fi and all my devices will just connect to it because you know they've been connected to it before whilst it was the SSID of the Linksys. So they'll all collect to that now and they'll use Pi-hole as the DHCP server and everyone will know about the local DNSs and everything will get blocked by the block list and you know it'll all work. So we're going to change the SSID now and wait for them to all ping over. Now it just wouldn't be fair if I'd done all of this and didn't bother to integrate it into Home Assistant. So we'll head over to Home Assistant now. If we go to the configuration and the integrations page, we can set it up through the UI. We click the plus, search for Pi Hole, and we type in the Pi's IP address. Now we're going to want to use the API key here. You don't have to, but if you don't, then you don't get all the functionality of the server. So why wouldn't you? So we need to head back over to Pi Hole, go to settings, go to API, and show the API key. It'll give you a new window with a QR code and a raw token. We want to copy the raw token ID, and paste that here in Home Assistant. 
Once that's done, we should you know, click submit and we should get a success. And then if we click through and we see the device, our Pi Hole, we can see that we've got the ability to turn it on and off. That's the ad blocking, not the DHCP or any of the other features. And we can also see various stats about the sites that have been, or how many sites have been blocked, how many clients we've got, and all of that. So there we go. My network has been fully side graded and customized. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.